Hi, this is Tom Greenwood from sydneyportraits.com.au and greenwoodphotos.com. In this clip, we're looking at how to create a simple DIY photo studio using a single flash, a diffuser, in this case an umbrella, a wall as background and a reflector. It's about as basic as you can get, but with this setup, you can create really nice studio portraits for little expense. So here's an overview of the equipment you'll need. A light stand, a bracket flash holder, an umbrella, wireless flash triggers, a flash, a camera, a lens hood, and a reflector. Note that most of these items come in cheap and expensive versions. I would suggest that for basic items such as light stands, umbrellas, and reflectors, you can get away with the cheap versions. You might want to buy a couple of each in case they fall apart. But for anything electronic, it's worth investing in quality. Saving a few hundred dollars on a flash is no saving at all if the flash stops working after a week or two. And the kind of flash triggers that you can buy for a few bucks on eBay are terrible. Avoid them at all costs. So let's set up the studio. First, we'll put up the light stand tightening the screws firmly. Then we'll take the flash bracket. A flash bracket allows you to attach a hot shoe flash and an umbrella diffuser, and then adjust the angle. This type of bracket is not much more than $10, but it's nice and solid. Next, wireless flash triggers. These carry the all important signal from the camera to the flash. Flash triggers are an alternative to a lead, which is cumbersome. It's easy to trip over or tangle, and it's also unreliable. In my experience, these Photix triggers are pretty good. Not much more than $100 for a set, and above all, reliable. Triggers come as transmitters that attach to the camera, and receivers that go onto the flash. In terms of flash, I'm using my trusty Canon Speedlight 580. I've had it for years and it's never let me down. It wasn't cheap, but unlike cheap imitations, it was worth every penny. So let's attach the flash trigger receiver to the flash, locking it onto the hot shoe so it doesn't fall off. Next, we'll attach the flash trigger to the bracket, taking care to tighten it both on the bracket and the trigger so it doesn't drop. Let's take the umbrella and slot it through the bracket. Tighten it and then expand out the umbrella. You'll notice that we're going to shoot through the umbrella rather than use it to bounce light off. Now for the camera. First, let's put the lens hood on. The hood is important as we'll be shooting next to and behind the flash and we don't want direct light entering the lens and clouding it. Now we're ready to put the transmitter trigger on the camera hot shoe. Once it's on, we need to sync the triggers, making sure each is set to the same channels. Let's set the flash. We'll put it on manual mode. As we want to shoot in the lowest ISO possible, 100, we want a fairly strong blast but we can adjust this once we start shooting. Next, we'll set the camera. We'll go for shutter speed of 1 160th of a second, aperture f5.6. Finally, we're ready to bring in our subject. We'll position her close to the wall and then move the light stand so the flash and umbrella are pointing down at her face, creating a kind of Rembrandt light. Generally, I position the stand so the umbrella is close to the subject, about a meter or a meter and a half. That way, shadows are soft and there's a nice fall off of light. We're also positioning the reflector on the shadow side of the subject to reflect some light back and fill those shadows. So there it is, a simple studio setup that works indoors and outdoors, weather permitting. It creates lovely images and it won't break the bank. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.